The Mana Charitable Foundation Most paranormal organizations in the SCP universe consider themselves to be good, and that they are doing the right thing. This includes the SCP Foundation, the Global Occult Coalition, the Serpent's Hand, the Church of the Broken God, and even the Sarkic Cults. From an outside point of view, though, most of these groups do some pretty objectionable things from time to time, and you certainly wouldn't refer to the majority of them as charitable in any sense. The MANA Charitable Foundation, on the other hand, have a pretty simple mission statement. Utilize any means necessary to provide assistance to those in dire need. In other words, this is a group that possesses knowledge of anomalies, and even gets their hands on some, and uses them occasionally to help out those that need it. This is a mostly commendable goal, in theory, but not one without complications, as we'll see. The MANA Charitable Foundation is a humanitarian, non-profit organization founded by individuals with knowledge of the paranormal. Most anomalies that exist are pretty dangerous, but as I've shown in my Beneficial SCPs video, there are some that could conceivably be utilized to assist people or save lives. The MCF seeks to help out those in need due to conflict, natural disaster, environmental decay, supernatural harm, or other events of calamitous effect on human life. Their charter claims that they do these activities in accordance with the regulations set by the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and abide by all lawful restrictions. They will never use violence or sanction any violent interactions, and will use what they refer to as abnormal assets, as long as doing so does not cause greater harm than the absence of their use. They accept pretty much anyone into their organization as long as they are fully committed to the group's goals and their mode of operations. They don't have any single headquarters, as that tends to be a bad idea in the SCP universe, but rather they have five main offices spread across the globe, in Canada, Spain, China, Australia, and South Africa. A group known as the International Board comprises the leaders and decision makers of the MCF consisting of the highest ranking members of the organization, as well as representatives of some of the MCF's most important donors and experts. The MCF is not an entirely secret organization, and they actually operate in a limited capacity within the public eye as a normal charity. Most of the members of the MCF operate in secret though, working under hundreds of different front charities in small clusters known as mission work groups. These are the groups sent out across the world to utilize anomalies to aid those in need, concealed from government and military supervision, and even obscured from other mission work groups. The MCF continues to exist due to an extensive set of mysterious donors, individuals and organizations that donate funds and anomalies to the MCF for various reasons. The group's ultimate goal is to create a world that is rid of disease, famine, poverty, and armed conflict, and they are prepared to use any means necessary to achieve this goal. None of this is really surprising, and this is all just the info that the MCF would be glad to share with people interested, so we'll have to start digging to see how their operations are going. As usual, we'll be looking at a few SCP articles for some insight, which means that these are anomalies that the SCP Foundation are interested in and have more than likely taken from the MCF to contain. There are of course plenty of other smaller anomalies that the MCF still holds onto, so we're just looking at some of the exceptions. Typically, in the case of contained SCPs related to the MCF, they are examples of the MCF having apparently good intentions but terrible execution. This is pretty evident with SCP-1501, a series of humanoid robots constructed of copper, iron, plastic, and animal hair, with the words MANA Charitable Foundation Official Charity Delegate embossed under their backs. Each of these robots has some method of collecting funds, such as a bucket or box, and when left free, will move to areas commonly used by charity collectors, such as street corners, office buildings, and traffic lights. 
Here, they will begin asking for and collecting money for a variety of charities and causes, ranging from poverty to AIDS to underperforming MCF facilities to various endangered species of birds. Once funds are collected, the robots will go to transfer the money to the correct charity or fund, either by sending it through the postal system, delivering it by hand, or sending each bill individually by use of birds. This is all well and good, and if things stopped there, we could commend the MCF, but of course, it doesn't stop there. If someone hands off money to the same robot multiple times, it will begin to follow the person and observe any financial transactions they perform. It will follow them to their home, their work, and pretty much everywhere else for several weeks until it has a good idea of what kind of charities the person is likely to donate to. It will then begin to ask this person for donations for those specific charities. Creepy, but things get really bad when a 1501 entity comes across a wealthy person that is likely to donate to charities. This person will become the robot's sole focus, and it will send donation request letters to them constantly, alter their mail, and even disguise themselves as people familiar to the person. This will go on until either physically stopped, or the authorities are alerted, in which case the robot will flee and become inert if captured. In an interview with a man targeted by a 1501 entity, he says that he came home one day, took off his coat, and saw his wife looking into a mirror, but her arms were completely still. When he asked her what's wrong, she turned to him, but it was clearly not his wife, with its face too angled and glass eyes. The entity proceeded to open its mouth by more than six inches, its jaw fell off, and it proceeded to ask the man over and over if he has considered the plight of the homeless. So far, around 60 of these entities have been captured, and they had been growing increasingly violent in their demands for charitable donations. Apparently, the MCF isn't happy with whoever donated these robots to them, as it makes them look pretty bad. A similar case of good intentions but bad execution is SCP-1176, a mummified corpse of a human male that likely died sometime in the 10th or 11th century. Although 1176 is clinically dead, its brain still shows a constant level of electrical activity consistent with deep sleep. In place of all the normal bodily fluids inside of a human being, 1176 contains a viscous, golden-colored fluid, chemically identical to clover honey. This fluid exudes from 1176's pores, roughly 0.2 liters per hour, although this can rapidly increase if left unchecked. The substance was found to contain around 2,500 calories per 15 milliliters, with significant quantities of essential vitamins and nutrients. There are no long-term side effects from eating it, and it prevents physical sensations of hunger for 14 to 18 hours. Unfortunately, it's only edible in this way by people of blood type AB positive, and anyone else that consumes more than 0.5 milliliters of the substance will experience a severe allergic reaction a few hours later. In 98.7% of tests with incompatible subjects, the reaction ended with death, and the symptoms were consistent with an individual receiving an incompatible blood transfusion. The Foundation tracked SCP-1176 down by tracing the source of shipments of honey that had been distributed to famine-stricken regions of Ethiopia, which had resulted in thousands of deaths. The mummy was in a sarcophagus in an MCF facility, with a spigot installed into the sarcophagus to extract the fluid. Testing was done by the SCP Foundation afterwards to see how much of the fluid the mummy could potentially produce, for some reason reaching an upper limit of 55 liters per hour. After 10 hours, a sudden spike in brain activity was detected, and 1176 became conscious, opening its eyelids and flailing wildly. It engaged in distressed vocalizations and attempted to crawl across the test chamber. Staff personnel attempted to restrain the entity, resulting in one of its hands being severed at the wrist. 
sedation attempts proved unsuccessful, so they put it back in the sarcophagus and set the lid on top. The entity continued to vocalize and strike the inside of the sarcophagus for around three hours before returning to its previous state. This really seems like a good candidate for euthanization, as we can barely call this one beneficial. The MCF doesn't always make things worse though, as shown with SCP-1135, an isolated village in India. The village contains over a hundred houses, several places of business, and a Hindu temple, all of which are larger and built with far more technologically advanced materials than other villages in the region. They also all include running hot and cold water, electricity, and plumbing systems. The roads in the village, as well as for two kilometers around the village, are fully paved with asphalt concrete. An investigation revealed that all the building materials and permanent fixtures contained strands of organic fiber running through them, which extend up to three meters below the ground and connect to one another, forming an organic network. The fibers grow, repair themselves, and absorb nutrients from the soil, making 1135 a single living organism similar to a fungus. New buildings are occasionally spontaneously created by 1135, and any damaged structures or fixtures are quickly repaired, basically growing out of the ground. The rate and capacity for growth and repair of 1135 is dependent on how much sustenance it receives. It absorbs water and nutrients from the soil, but also consumes any waste left within the boundaries of the village, causing it to deteriorate and decompose rapidly leaving behind no remains. It will not perform this process on any living organic tissue or objects being actively used in the village, and if it goes too long without being fed, it will only take down some buildings to absorb the nutrients. However, if a human or animal causes substantial or repetitive damage to 1135 buildings, it will lash out in the form of constructing elaborate traps to ward off injure or kill attackers. These range from pitfalls to caltrops to complicated traps that would indicate a higher intelligence. Other than this though, 1135 was completely peaceful, and the villagers seemed to enjoy living there until the foundation stumbled upon it. The residents said that an organization named the Mana Charitable Foundation had orchestrated the process, referring to it as a sustainable housing development scheme. The SCP Foundation kicked everyone out, gave them amnestics, and fenced off the village, keeping it alive by dumping waste from a nearby facility into it. One of the most amusing experiments that the MCF attempted, again with less than successful results, was SCP-514. 514 is a flock of homing pigeons that project a zone around them, roughly about 500 meters in radius, that nullifies all weapons and thoughts of aggression. Every known type of weapon that enters this zone will be rendered inoperable, usually permanently if left inside of it for too long. Firearms will jam or misfire, explosives are rendered inert, and melee weapons decay into dust. Humans and animals that enter this zone will suddenly feel very calm and content, regardless of previous emotions, and will be unable to carry out a violent action. 514 came to the Foundation's attention when numerous reports of weapons stockpiles being destroyed in Africa started cropping up. This was originally written off as due to poor maintenance on the weapons, but there were reports of seeing a flock of homing pigeons at the same places, not a common sight in Africa. While investigating, the SCP Foundation bumped into a team from the MCF, who were also tracking the birds, as they had been the ones who released them in Africa. Their plan was to end all conflict in Africa, although they had no way to control the birds' movements, and the effects of the zone were only temporary for humans. This meant that they would simply resume hostilities with what weapons they still had afterwards, and it left affected areas defenseless when invaded by their unaffected neighbors. The SCP Foundation did manage to find a way to control the bird's movement, 
but the MCF team challenged them for custody, as they had been their possession. Since both groups were under the effects of 514 at the time, they decided to settle the matter through a single round of rock, paper, scissors. The SCP Foundation won, and the MCF team fled the area. In their testing, they found that prolonged exposure will eventually lead to any weapon being reduced to dust, and the effect can somehow discern if any item will be used for violent intent or not, thus neutralizing it accordingly. The reason that the birds still aren't contained, just controlled, is because any personnel actually sent to properly contain them refuses to complete the mission due to the effect. Any long-range devices or drones that are attempted to be used are rendered inoperable. MTF Lambda-4, bird watchers, are assigned to monitor the flock and use the means at their disposal to keep it away from population centers. All members of the Bird Watchers are required to be proficient in various non-violent competitive activities, including sports, board games, card games, trivia, riddles, and of course, rock, paper, scissors. It was a good anomaly, but the MCF had a bit too lofty of a goal in mind for that one. Like I said, we're mostly looking at anomalies that the MCF has used and failed with, either for bad execution or the SCP Foundation coming in to put a stop to it. There's certainly plenty more anomalies that the MCF are using that we don't know about. Small, minor things that allow them to help people to a greater degree than a mundane charity could. The MCF, for all intents and purposes, seem to be a group of lofty idealists that discovered a world filled with anomalies and decided that some of them could be used for good rather than being locked away. Whether or not that's actually what they are, and whether or not they're right, is a matter for debate.